Hello everyone, um, so my name is Edouard Archambault and I'm in charge of the Data and Artificial Intelligence Lab at BNP Paribas CIB. I think if we are here today, it's because we feel that artificial intelligence will have a tremendous impact in our industries, in our businesses, even if we still don't know how much and how far. And at the same time, we can see web giants that are placing huge bets on artificial intelligence. And indeed, AI is moving right now from being a research topic in laboratories to the early stage and only early stage of enterprise adoption. And it's going on under the pressure of three revolutions. The first one is the digital revolution, meaning that for the first time in our history, in the history of the world, almost all the information is stored in the same format, digitally. You know, text data, images, videos, same format, so meaning readable by computers. Second revolution being the computer revolution, the Lua's Mo, meaning that on your iPhone, you have more computing power than the, the NASA when they send the first man to the moon. Okay? And the third one, that is the Internet revolution, meaning that thanks to the open source, you can find the best algorithms, state of the art, in AI especially, on the web for free. Okay? And all together, it gives the AI revolution, and what we think is that it's probably going to be the biggest technological shift ever, because having millions, billions of, of use cases, basically. So what I want to do with you today, very simple, is just to answer three questions. First one is, what is AI? at BNP Paribas. Second one is, why do we do AI at BNP Paribas? And the third one is, how do we do it? So what is AI at BNP Paribas? In the bank, we are, in this bank, and in the bank in general, in the banking system, we are experts at dealing with structured data. Time series, prices, uh, matrices, uh, correlation matrices, etc. But when we are able to do that, we only do 20% of the job. Why? Because 80% of the data in the world is unstructured. Text data, images, voice, where in our emails, in our documents, in our chats, in our voice records, in our scans. Okay? And so we built this artificial intelligence lab for what? Just to deal with this, unstru this unstructured data. Now, why banking? Why AI in banking? I will give you just three reasons today. The first one is customer experience. You know, you, me, we are used, or we are getting used to the user experience of the web giants. So, for instance, the user experience of Google, you know, the user experience of Apple, Siri, for instance. Hey, Siri, what's, what's the weather for tonight? So when you have you know, this kind of user experience, user interface, so easy, so user-friendly, what do you expect? You expect exactly the same thing everywhere, from everybody and from the banks. And what we think in the bank at BNP Paribas is that the bank of tomorrow may, be, may well be a 24-7 banker in your pocket. Okay? So a Siri-like banker in your pocket you should ask, you, should, you could ask any question too. And to do that, what do you need? You need to master speech to text, so to convert voice into text, to build search engines, to have knowledge base, to generate text automatically, and to do text to speech. Okay? And this is AI. So, first reason. The second one is that our value chain in the bank is changing. Our business used to be to deal with the financial transactions of our clients. And it's becoming handling, being able to handle their information or the information related to their business. And the same shift already happened in other industries. In automotive, for instance. With Volkswagen, with BMW, used to be a business of um, you know, motors, engines, and Google came, completely different business, and they invented the, the self-driving car, turning it 
into an information processing business. And it's the same in the bank, and I will give you an example. If you take Uber, for instance, you know the taxi company, the cab company, when you think about it, it's a payment service. It's just a payment service, you know. It allows you, it's a way for you to pay for your driver, okay, and for your driver to, to get paid very easily. And in the bank, we also do payment, payment service, you know. But when we charge a couple of basis points, a company like Uber, they charge 25%, you know. And where does the difference come from? The difference comes from the platform, the data it generates, and the algorithms, the AI, the recommendation engine that you can put on top of it. So the value in the banking business is becoming the ability to handle and to extract value from this data. And the last point is that when you think about it, AI is part of the DNA of the bank, meaning our business has always been to create value, to bring new services to our clients through intelligence and technology. You know? And this is the reason why we have, and especially on the global market business, you know, the quants, the traders, where you have a strong infrastructure, a lot of computing power, huge, tremendous amount of data, and talented people, you know, quants, for instance. So AI, when you think about it, it's just an extension of this, of this business, of this part, to more data. And we have a lot of data, very complex, especially on the CIB, on the corporate and institutional banking side, where we deal with complex clients, a lot of complex structures, a lot of legal entities, etc. So this was the why. Now, how do we do it? So when we started the team, the AI lab in, in the bank, in, in CIB, uh, one and a half year ago, we asked ourselves, how did the main disruptive innovation in the history occur? How, you know? Um, Macintosh from Apple, um, Windows from Microsoft, Patreon from Google, how? And the answer was always the same, in a garage. No, in a garage. And what does it mean for the, for the bank? It means no more useless, endless meetings. No more red tape, so to focus on one objective, just creating products, technologies for clients. And so what we did, what we built, is that we assembled a team made of very young, digital, complementary, Profiles. So we have today, in the same team, of about 30 people, data scientists, experts from business, so people, data scientists first, experts from business also, coming, for instance, from the internal consulting teams, developers, full stack, front end, back end, data architect, uh, developers, and all together, we build products without any, any complexity of organization. And all together, we share one thing. We think that data is not only gold, you know, like people like to say, data is the new gold. It's not only gold, it's a diamond. It's the most important thing in this revolution. Why? First of all, it's, it's a diamond because it, it, adds a it adds a lot of value. You know, the value comes from the data, first thing. When you build models, the value comes from the data. The second thing, is that the value in the data comes from its structure, okay? Meaning we need and we spend a lot of time doing text mining, text mining, graph mining, just to structure and to clean the data to make it uh, usable by machines. And the third point is that, you know, a diamond, it has many facets. The data, same thing. It's multidimensional. And the value comes from building this multi, rebuilding this multidimensionality. Leveraging, for instance, graph databases. I'll give you an example. Today, all of you could be one point in a graph, and we could all together be linked to the same point in the graph being the meeting or the speech today. Okay. 
The world around us is made of objects with relationships. And the value comes from rebuilding you know, this universe through the data, so that every stakeholder also in the bank can see the data from the perspective it matters to him. And the last thing is that we built in the team very concrete things, meaning APIs and web services. And I will give you an example. It's a translation tool. In the company, in ADMP Fiber, we offer a translation service for our clients. We needed an internal solution because we cannot leverage Google Translate or Bing Translate. We cannot share the data of our clients with external providers. It's not possible, and we don't want to do it because it's what we have most precious. We want to protect it. So we launched an AFP to find a solution. We had a startup in the AFP. We had a very famous uh, actor with an on-premise solution. And we decided to propose an internal solution. So leveraging open source. We leverage, we use an open source framework of machine translation, state-of-the-art deep learning. And we used both external and internal data to, f to train the algorithm. External data, namely, the, speech, the transcript of the speeches at the European Parliament, and internal data, uh, meaning the translation, the historical translation that we, we did. And at the end of the day, we got a model, a translation tool, that is better than Google Translate on the financial vocabulary. So to conclude, today, the question is not anymore if AI will be important for, for, for all of us and for the bank. But the question is, are we going to be fast enough to um, be impactful and to take advantage of this ongoing revolution? And at BNP Paribas, we think that yes, and it's going to be by leveraging the data that we have uh, internally. Thank you.